morning, fourth graders. Hope everybody's having a good day. Uh, I'm actually recording these videos the day before I send them to you. So it's actually St. Patrick's Day. We're all wearing our green over here and trying to get outside. It's a beautiful day. So hopefully you guys are having a great day as well. Um, we're going to go ahead and do another multiplication problem today. Today's problem will be... So again, as you're trying to think of your strategy, go ahead and pause the video, give yourself some think time. Uh, remember, this is mental math. We need to try and figure out a way to be flexible with our numbers and be able to um, you know, make sense of this problem in our heads without using paper or pencil. So try and think of a way to do that. Maybe share your strategy with someone around you. And then in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and share my strategy with you. So when I look at this problem, 36 times 14, uh, this is a little too difficult for me to keep track of in my brain. So instead, I'm going to go ahead and divide up my 14 into 10 plus 4. So I'm going to use my distributive property here. Instead of doing 36 times 14, I'm going to do 36 times 10 and then 36 times 4. So I know that 36 times 10 is going to give me 360. Now I just have to do my 36 times 4. And again, even that's a little tricky to keep um, you know, track of in my head. So now I'm going to go ahead and divide up my 36 into 30 plus 6. And again, use my distributive property here. So I'm going to do 30 times 4 and then 6 times 4. So 30 times 4 is going to give me a product of 120. 6 times 4 is going to give me a product of 24. And now I just need to go back and add all of my products together. So I have 360 plus 120 plus 24. And my third grader, Patrick, wants to help me with this addition here. So what would you do, Patrick? So I would do 0 plus 0 plus 4 is 4. All right, so you're going to add up all your 1s. OK. And then I would do 60 plus 20 plus 20 is 100. All right, so 60 plus 20 plus 20 is 100. Okay. I would regroup the 1 and 100 and put it on, over the 3, so. Okay, so now this is gonna actually go with the hundreds, right? So I'm gonna just cross that out so I don't get confused. So this is now 100, it's worth 100, so it's gonna be added into my to your other hundreds, okay? 100 plus 300 plus 100 equals 500. Okay. So the answer is 504. Okay, so now we're going to add our 500 and our 4 together to get a, a product, right? An overall product for 36 times 14 of 504. Have a great day. Let's talk about multiplying by 10, 100, and 1,000. There's some cool number patterns that happen with each of these. So let's start here with something like 4 times 10, one that maybe we're comfortable with or already know. 4 times 10 would be the same as saying 4 tens. 4 tens. And 4 tens, one way we could represent that is a 10 plus a second 10, plus a third 10, plus a fourth 10 or four tens. And now let's count that. 10 plus 10 is 20, plus 10 is 30, plus 10 is 40. So our solution is 40, or a four with a zero. And this is the pattern that we've seen before. When we multiply four times 10, we keep our whole number of four, and we add a zero to the end for the times 10. So another example of that might be something like 8 times 10. Well, 8 times 10 is the same as 8 tens. And this time, let's just count them. If we count 8 tens, it'll be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. So when I counted 8 tens, the solution was 80, or an 8 with a 0 on the end. So times 10, when we multiply a whole number times 10, the pattern is that we end up adding 
a zero to the end of our whole number. So let's take now what we already know about tens and let's apply it to hundreds. Something like, let's say, two times 100. There's a couple ways we can think about this. One way is to say that this is the same as two hundreds, two hundreds, which is 100 plus another 100. There is quite literally two hundreds, which is a total of 200, or two with two zeros on the end. Now we have two zeros on the end. Or another way to think about this is two, two times 100, instead of saying times 100, we could say times 10 times 10, because 10 times 10 is the same as 100. And two times 10, we know is a two with a zero on the end, which is 20, and 20 times 10 then will be 20 with a zero on the end. Because we multiplied by 10 twice, we added two zeros. And multiplying by 100 is just that. It's exactly that. It's multiplying by 10 twice. So if times 10 adds one zero, then times 100, or times 10 twice, adds two zeros to our answer. And we can go even further and think about thousands. Let's try something like 9 times 1,000. Well, we could think of this as 9 thousands, and if we have 9 thousands, then we have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, that was 5, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000. So when I counted 1,000 nine times, our solution was 9,000. Or looking at the numbers, a 9, our original whole number, with three zeros after it. So nine times a thousand is nine thousand, or nine with three zeros. And we can go back to what we did before, thinking about this in terms of tens. We've worked out why multiplying by ten adds a zero. So let's think about one thousand in terms of tens. One thousand is equal to ten times ten times ten. 10 times 10 is 100, and 100 tens is 1,000. So instead of 1,000, we can write 10 times 10 times 10. These are equivalent. And so when we multiply a number times 10, we add a zero, but here we're multiplying by three tens, so we add three zeros. So let's look at that all as one pattern. Let's say something, let's take seven, the number seven, and let's multiply it by 10, by 100, and by 1,000, and see what happens. Seven times 10 is going to be seven with one zero, because we have one 10. Seven times 100 will be seven with two zeros, because again, 100 is the same as 10 times 10. So this is seven times 10 twice, so we have two zeros. And seven times 1,000 will be 7,000, or seven with three zeros, because 1,000 is equal to 10 times 10 times 10, or three tens, so we add one, two, three zeros. And so we can see the pattern here when we multiply by 10, which has one zero, we add one zero to the end of our whole number. When we multiply a whole number times 100, which has two zeros, we add two zeros for hundreds. And for thousands, when we multiply by 1,000, we'll add three zeros to the end of a whole number.